Hi there. The Raspberry Pi Foundation have just announced a new Raspberry Pi. It's a little bit different from their existing ones, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a look at it and do an unboxing and sort of share my views on it. So let's get started. Right. Now, this, after I pop myself down in the, up in the corner apparently, this is your standard Raspberry Pi. This is kind of what most people are used to when they think of a Raspberry Pi. Credit card size computer, very bare, very open. Um, you kind of need other bits to make it work and not maybe friendly to your average Joe in the street. Friendly to sort of your hacker community, but not so friendly to the average person in the street. This is a Raspberry Pi keyboard. It's a very nice keyboard. Um, comes with a detachable cable, USB hub in the back, so you can plug a mouse into it. But it's a very nice keyboard. It's quite reasonable for the price. It's actually quite nice to type on. I quite like it. What the Raspberry Pi Foundation have done is actually take this and put it into that to produce a computer that's a bit like the ones we used to get in the 80s, where everything was built into one keyboard, computer was all mashed up together. So let's have a look. Pop this out of the way for the moment. And then this was delivered by the very nice people from UPS yesterday. And this is the Raspberry Pi 400. Nice box, you can sort of see computer on the, in, on the inside. This is the kit which actually has everything you need in it to start computing apart from a monitor. Connectors on the back, bit of information about the computer, front picture, but of course the interesting stuff is on the inside. So let's actually open this up and have a look at the inside. And this is what we have. At first glance, it looks very like the key keyboard I just showed you. If we look at the back, we can suddenly see where the differences are happening. That's the original keyboard. That's the top, uh, the new computer. Only real difference, as you can see here, is this LED has been renamed from scroll lock to power, and rather than scroll lock there, it says power lock there. The real differences come if you look at the back. Suddenly you can see all kind of ports that we used to have on the Raspberry Pi. So GPIO, slot for your micro SD card, couple of micro HDMI ports, USB-C for power, two USB 3 ports, one USB 2 port, you typically use that for the mouse, and gigabit Ethernet but with no activity lights on it. But you can see the form factor there is identical to the keyboard. On the bottom, only the real differences are the labels and there's some vent slots down there. And that gives you the key as to how they've actually managed to pull this off and get an entire Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig model inside here. I don't know if you can see, oh you can, because I can see it glinting very nicely. There's actually a dirty great passive metal heat sink in there, which sits on top of a custom board, which is gives you the same functionality as the Raspberry Pi 4, but it's modified for this single pins coming out, so, sorry, single connectors coming out on one side type layout. And that gives you very impressive passive cooling. A lot of other people have run tests, I'm not gonna bother to go through those here, but if you Google it, you will find that this thing runs at um, its full clock speed, under load testing with no problem with thermals at all. You're sort of hitting, it'll hit around the 50, 60 degree mark, no problem at all. The other difference between this one and this one is this one is clocked at 1.5, four cores, 1.5 gigahertz. This one is four cores, but it's clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. The reason they've managed to do that has been, it's been a step change in the CPU, where it's moved from, I think it was B0 to C0. And that, along with some microgating, which is how you can control power and whether bits are actually powered on when you're using them on the CPU, means of being able to bump the clock speed to 1.8. So you've actually picked up a speed boost with that. Let's get back to actually seeing what else we get in the box. This is the full computer kit, by the way. You can just buy the keyboard on your own. That's about $70 or I think about 65 pounds, I think. The full kit is $99 or 94 pounds in the UK. I paid just over 100, literally 101 pounds and some pennies for this with the shipping. But see, I've got the computer there. Underneath that, 
I get the official Raspberry Pi power supply, USB-C, uh, three amp, I think. Yep, three amp there. I get an official Raspberry Pi mouse to go with the keyboard element. I get a micro SD card adapter so that you can plug this into your computer if you want to, to update the um, OS that's on the uh, micro SD card. Also got an adapter cable, so that takes you from the micro HDMI to the full HDMI. And we've got the Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide book. That's been updated for the 400. A lot of the information is sort of, um, you know, is applicable to any Raspberry Pi. And in fact, the major piece is there's a couple of extra pages put in which show you how to connect up your Raspberry Pi 4. But this is a great book for somebody who is just starting out with computers. It covers um, things like sort of, let me get to the page and I'll actually show you what it covers. There we go. It covers things like getting to know it, setting it up, using it, programming with Scratchery, programming with Python, and then there's some physical pieces and using sense. It also covers the camera module. Now that is one of the differences between this and the original Raspberry Pi. The original Raspberry Pi, if I can find it, there we go, has connectors for a display and for a camera port. That's a display port, that's a camera. Now this one doesn't have those, but that's because of the use case. They're envisaging that you will be plugging this into a monitor, so we'll be using the monitor rather than the display port. Camera port, I've seen a lot of people getting quite uptight about this and getting worried about it. My take on this is simply if I needed a webcam because I wanted to use this for Zoom meetings or something like that, which is what people are talking about, I'd simply plug into one of the USB ports. So one of the USB ports is going to be taken up with your mouse. That still leaves you two USB ports free. You could put a st big storage device on there, but you can put a webcam on there as well. And there are plenty of webcams out there that will work with this. So let's start delving into packages. This is the official power supply. Cable there is non-detachable. Um, standard USB-C plug on the other, so that will simply go in there when you want to power up your computer. And that's your HDMI cable. Um, the ports on the standard Raspberry Pi are actually labelled 1 and 2, and you generally speaking want to use the HDMI, sorry, actually labelled HDMI 0 and 1, and you want to use 0 um, and then 1, because 0 is the primary display. On here, that one is the one that's closest to the micro SD port, so that's the kind of typical configuration that you'd use. And then we have the mouse, which is sealed. So let me just get out a knife to open that up. There we go. And this is your official Raspberry Pi mouse. Again, basic, but perfectly adequate, very nice mouse for this setup. One thing to be aware of is it has quite a short cable on it compared to most mice that you run across. However, I've never had this to be a problem. Even though this plugs into the left-hand side of the board over here, if you're a right-handed person like me, you'll actually find there's plenty of room. I mean, I can see how far I can stretch sideways there. There's plenty of room for that. And to be honest, having a short cable actually just declutters your desk. So I'm fairly happy about that. So your sort of working setup would be you'd be plugged in with the monitor cable in there, you'd be plugged in with the power supply in there, and that would give you your working setup of a computer. I have to say I love this, but that's probably just my age group, because these are the kind of computers that we grew up with when I was getting started with computing. The all-in-one units, everything is just built into that computer. You can literally just unplug everything, take that with you, and you have your entire computer there. They are brilliant. In terms of the specs for it, as I've said, it's actually a slightly boosted um, Pi 4. So it's 1.8 rather than 1.5. It's got four gigabytes of RAM on it. The micro SD card that actually comes with it in the kit 
is 16 gig. That's enough to get you started. It's an A1 card as well. You can boost the performance slightly if you wanted to. I probably get one over here. There we go. That's a SanDisk Extreme. That's actually still an A1 card. A1 refers to how fast the card works for applications. I don't know if this will focus down on there. Focusing tricks. There we go. Yes, you can see it says A1. You can get A2 cards as well. It'll be slightly more expensive, but you can get A2 cards. And those will be slightly better optimised for application performance. But to sort of summarise this, just to keep this video short, I'm not going to boot this computer up now because I'm actually not set up to be able to capture the screen at the moment. But I think this is a great kit if you want to introduce somebody to computing. So maybe you sort of get a kid out there or somebody who's just decided they get want to get into computing as a Christmas present or something like this. This is absolutely brilliant because this really does give you everything you need. You've got the power supply, you've got the cables. All you need to do is get a TV or a monitor um, with some speakers because this thing doesn't have audio outputs on it. But most monitors, I mean this monitor I'm looking at here, that has speakers in it. A lot of monitors now have speakers. TVs virtually always have speakers in them. It's very unusual to find one that doesn't. This would give you everything that you need to get started with computing. And along with the beginner's guide, that'll take you through the basics of computing. It'll take you through um, how to start programming in Python. It would give you a very good grounding. And you've got something which is quite reasonable in terms of keyboard feel and usage. And to do a test that you should always do on a keyboard, press down one end of the spacebar and see if the spacebar goes down evenly. If it doesn't, you've got a nasty keyboard. This one, as you can see, passes that test perfectly. Doesn't matter where I space, press on the spaceboard, it's running down perfectly. So, in summary, if you are thinking about getting computers for somebody, especially somebody who's maybe not used computers before, who would find that intimidating, this is a very worthwhile alternative. This is really great. Lots of expansionability, lots of power to actually do basic things like web browsing, reading email, everything like that, even having a quick look on YouTube and everything. This will rock it for them. So that's all I've got to say on this. Thank you very much for watching.